Hi everybody, it's Dr. Mona Gohara. Welcome to another episode of Dear Derm. Today we are gonna talk all about eyes. Eye wrinkles, eye bags, eye puffiness, I got you. So there's this big question, which is, do we really need eye creams? And it's been an age-old question amongst dermatologists. And I think you'll probably, if you you surveyed 100 dermatologists, you get a 50-50 split. So I'm definitely on team eye cream. Why do I like eye cream? Because eyelid skin is thinner. So that means it has less collagen, it has less elastin, and it's definitely more prone to sun damage. So to the extent that you can cater the creams that you're putting on your eyes, I think you absolutely should if they're available. Why do people get bags under their eyes? Sometimes it's genetic. Sometimes it's just because fluid accumulates in the skin under the eyes to create a little pooch or puff. That's one of the easier things to treat because you can use cooling devices. So even a cool eye mask that you put in the refrigerator or a cool cream that you put on your skin can help to constrict the vessels under the eyelid skin a little bit to bring down that puff. Now if it's something that's genetic, the story's a little different. That means you may have to have a procedure such as filler or some type of surgical procedure to get rid of that puff permanently. Also a good idea if you're struggling with puffy eyes or you have a tendency to get a little eyelid puff, to decrease your salt intake because we know that that creates fluid retention as well. Doesn't mean cut salt off altogether, but just be mindful of the amount of sodium in your diet. All right, so let's talk about dark circles. I have dark circles, I struggle with dark circles, I know what a pain dark circles can be because they always make people think that you're tired when you're not. That's just the way you are. So there's two causes for dark circles under the eye, pigment and blood vessels. Pigmentary changes under the eyes can be genetic and are very different amongst different races. For example, Middle Eastern or Southeast Asian people can have just genetically dark circles under their eyes. I'm Egyptian and practically everybody in my family has the same thing. It's something you see very commonly amongst certain ethnic groups. Now, the blood vessels are a different story. As we get older and our eyelid skin thins, the blood vessels under the skin become more apparent and actually come through as a dark or bluish hue creating discoloration under the eyes. So each one kind of has its own unique cause um, and each one has different treatments. So the first thing you obviously can do is conceal it, right? If you have hyperpigmentation under your eyes, you can always use a concealer to try and get rid of, or make it, you won't get rid of it, but you'll make it less obvious. The next thing we recommend for hyperpigmentation under the eyes are creams with caffeine in them. Why? Because caffeine constricts the blood vessels, and when the blood vessels are constricted, remember we said sometimes that hyperpigmentation comes from blood vessels, it becomes less obvious. Another way to to treat it is to use the the methods wherein we use to treat hyperpigmentation on the face. Those are things like vitamin C and retinoids, which can safely be put under the eyes if you just use a small amount, but they have a brightening effect, and so that discoloration is a little less obvious. Remember we talked about the fact that eyelid skin is thin and can therefore be more easily irritated. So use lower percentages, things that are a little bit more gentle. So if you may use a 20% vitamin C on your face, use a 10% vitamin C on your eyes. If you use a stronger retinoid on your face, bring it down a notch for under the eyes so the irritation is less, but the effect is definitely still there. So here are some options with some ingredients that we love for hyperpigmentation under the eye. I love Color Science. Total Eye 3-in-1. Why do I love it? Because it's not only a sunscreen, it's a concealer and actually has anti-aging properties as well. That's definitely one of my favorites. And then a great drugstore option is the Cetaphil Hydrating Gel because it has hydrating products like hyaluronic acid, but also things that can help target hyperpigmentation like licorice root extract. Certainly as we get older, 
the eyelid skin can become more dry. As our estrogen levels drop, our skin overall becomes more dry, and I feel like our eyelid skin specifically because it's just so thin. So there are some tricks. Obviously, you can continue to use your night cream that helps to add or infuse moisture into the skin. But to add a little bit extra oomph, I am totally into eye masks right now. And there's a couple that I really love. Now some of the eye masks that I love are, is the Bliss. I got this eye mask. It's a cute, besides the fact that it's a super cute name, um, it has hyaluronic acid in it and it just drives hydration into the skin. Just easy crescent shaped applicators that fit right under your eye that you can multitask with and do any number of things while you have them on. I also love the Glam Glow Eye Booster Eye Mask. It's really cool. It looks like you're going to a masquerade ball. You have to check it out just for the looks. Your family will love it. Um, again, it has hyaluronic acid in it and just really helps to drive in extra moisture. So one of my very favorite ways to hydrate under the eyes is using just a tiny, tiny little dab of good old Vaseline. A tiny bit, like literally just a smidge bigger than like a poppy seed. We're not using too much. Just put a little bit under the eye and it really can make a big difference in terms of hydration. If you don't use too much, you don't have to worry about things like milia or other occlusive little cysts that can come about. It is so economical and so, so effective. I highly recommend it. The first and most important tip I have to offer you is don't forget to wear your sunscreen. To make sure that your eyelid skin is protected and to prevent sun damage, we have to consider the use not only of a broad spectrum SPF 30 or higher, but also other accessories like sunglasses. Eyelid skin and eyes are particularly vulnerable to the damaging effects of ultraviolet light, so make sure you make it a priority to protect that skin. The other thing you can do before you spend more time in the sun is not only put on your sunscreen, but then apply a concealer that has sunscreen infused into it as well, just for a little bit of extra added protection. So one of the things that is really important to focus on is both removing and putting on makeup when it comes to your eye skin health. Just be gentle. For example, when I put on my concealer in the morning, I use either my index finger or my fourth finger and just gently tap. There's no reason to tug or pull or push. All of that can create more breakage of blood vessels and more hyperpigmentation. A really gentle tap is all that it takes. Or using a makeup sponge, really gently tapping that. Same principle goes for removal. You don't need to do tons of stuff, no scrubbing, nothing like that. Because why? That can break the blood vessels and create more hyperpigmentation or dark circles under the eyes. So my recommendation there is to take a little cotton ball or a cotton, cotton pad and just use a little micellar water or even the tiniest bit of Vaseline and I promise you, it'll come right off. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Dear Derm, where we talked about all things eyes. Make sure that you leave any comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Well and Good. See you next time.